This week we had a surprise announcement for the retro game community and the physical game market, technically, because I feel like this could actually open the door to some very surprising announcements in the future. Just based on what we're seeing here and some of the effort that's gone into making this possible, it does make me wonder if this is more lucrative than I originally expected. And I wanted to go over that here today and why we could see a bit of a resurgence of the cartridge market when it comes to gaming. So if you guys enjoy the video, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. Now, this of course comes from the announcement that we will be getting a new Doom cartridge for the Super Nintendo. And this one was was particularly interesting because of the specialized hardware that went into creating Doom originally on the Super Nintendo. This one is a bit more difficult now to replicate as a physical cartridge from basic, for basically scratch. Like usually you'd have to go out and find a cartridge that already has that chip on the board and use it as a quote unquote donor cart. And it was a very common practice back in the day. I'm, I'm talking like, uh, ooh, that'd have been 15, 15 years ago or so. It was, it was a while ago when this was maybe starting up, get, becoming a bit more popular to make your own reproduction cartridges for the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, the Genesis. Uh, and it was, it was a popular thing to go out and find cheap Super Nintendo cartridges and turn them into more expensive ROM hacks or translations, or in some cases, people, of course, would just make counterfeit cartridges and sell them or, I don't know, put them in their collection or something. But Either way, it wasn't something that was super easy back then. It wasn't having a cartridge, that an SD card that went into it. There was uh, a lot more effort when it when it came to trying to make something like this. But here we are. I mean, we have this standard edition Doom in 2025 for the Super Nintendo. In fact, it's actually new and improved. And this just doesn't just mean new levels. Apparently, the game itself and the hardware inside of the cartridge is improved to the point where maybe it'll even it'll run better. Well, see, because the Super Nintendo we know, it relied on cartridges that would have specialized chips inside, and it was a very clever way to take the Super Nintendo from what it started out to, to the next level as the generation went on. And this, this happened rapidly because we had so many different chips. But in, in particular, Doom, the red cartridge, if any of you out there had it on the Super Nintendo, used a, a Super FX chip. It was actually a Super FX2 or GSU2 chip. And when I saw this pop up, I said, okay, how in the world are they doing that? Well, other people were asking, and there was a response here from Randy over on X, where they say, we have our own chip that is compatible with SuperFX, but provides a larger address space and fewer wait states, so it runs faster. And that, that's the part that really sticks out to me. So while they will be selling, what, 666 copies of the limited edition one, I'm sure the standard edition is just completely wide open. They're going to make as many as they get orders for. And while it is limited run, which I'll admit, if you order from them, it does take a long time seemingly to get the product. We get to a position where that is not as much of a thing. Like, that's always what I point to. And I will say, if limited run got to the point where... It, you ordered it, and it showed up in a timely fashion, even if you pre-order it. It really wouldn't be a, an issue at all ordering from them. Like, there, I wouldn't have much pause at all, even though I know they've had a recent issue with, like, burning stuff to CDRs and sending them out, and they didn't work on, I believe, with the 3DO. It, the amount of stuff they ship out and the quality when the stuff shows up, that does kind of feel like a, a bit of a one-off in, like, the sea of orders and releases that they do. Because they, they do quite a, a few of them. And I'm thinking as we go along here... I must wonder if the cartridge market could see a bit of a resurgence here with products like these, these sorts of releases where you maybe approach uh, Bethesda and you create something like this, Doom for the Super Nintendo. Because as I mentioned, they're creating a specific chip for this project, which tells me they must think that they are going to sell a number of them, especially if the limited edition one is limited to 666 copies. I assume they, they believe they're going to look at the standard edition and sell thousands and thousands of these things. And they're not using, like, so I mentioned we would do donor carts. Well, eventually we got to the point where we could we could use custom boards that were made, like these, for example. I don't think you can even buy these anymore. Uh, but, like, you wouldn't buy this to make a Super FX game. These were just for games that didn't necessarily use specialized chips. 
All right, like you could still do some of the the big titles that people really really liked and wanted to get their hands on or really popular ROM hacks, but there was a limit to it. So like over on this is SNES Central and they they have a very good they're a very good resource for taking a look at some of the different boards. And these right here are all Super Nintendo cartridge boards. And there were many configurations. You can see most of them here, special chip, none like all the way down. Eventually you start getting to some of the specialized chips. You'll recognize some like the Super FX or the Mario chip, which obviously in something like uh, something like Star Fox was utilized. There's GSU-2. CX-4, this was a chip that Capcom used. And that was in Mega Man X2 and X3 specifically. They didn't use it in anything else, from what I remember. Just those, just those two games. Like that, that, that was all. SA1 was actually used in a number of different games. Mario, Super Mario RPG is the the best example. But they also used it in like the there was like the Kirby game. I think like the collection or something, the Superstar Saga that I believe used the SA1 chip. Uh, Dragon Ball Z, Hyper Dimensions, that was only in Japan, that used the SA-1 chip. SDD-1, that was, a, I believe, a decompression chip, and that was used in Star Ocean, I think Street Fighter, Alpha... Like I said, there, was a, there were a lot of configurations, a lot of special chips, a lot of add-on PCBs, and if you look at the Super Nintendo just as a console, maybe not the most complicated system ever, right? But then you look at the cartridges, and there are so many different configurations and things to account for that emulation is already impressive that we were at least able to get to the point where you can play a lot of these pretty much all these games from i remember on the sd to snes or on uh or just through an emulator there's just so much here but it also makes me wonder if maybe there is a future for some of these games with these specialized chips to also be recreated in the future to where you could buy them physically for your super nintendo or one of several different clone systems that have come out since. The most popular reproduction cart I remember that was requested back in the day was Star Fox 2, and that's still being sold on eBay now. I double-checked, and I mean, these cartridges are there. People seem to be buying them. They pop up all the time. And because we couldn't reproduce that Super FX chip, we had to find one in a donor cartridge. And I, I remember, I think it was Stunt Race FX was the one that was used most. It was pretty cheap at the time. And it did have a Super FX chip, the GSU-1. Technically, Star Fox 2 is is designed for the FX2 chip, but it still worked on the, the GSU-1. We would actually change this little chip out right here. And it eventually got to the point where it had to run wires from all these legs, which was a pain. There were like boards that you would put here. People would design them and it made it really easy to do the entire transplant. But that's where we are back then. We still had to source these chips, which is one of the reasons that I'm so intrigued by this new Doom cartridge. And it's not to say we haven't had physical Super Nintendo games release recently. Like I, I even picked up like Vulcan, which I took a look at in a video. There was a retro bit joe and mac game that i picked up that when you look at it it's it's pretty obvious it's an aftermarket game it doesn't even have the same shape as a as a super nintendo game would the cartridge and uh, when you open it up it's a very basic pcb and one that would not be utilized for something like this with doom so i am very curious to take a look inside of this doom cartridge to see how far they push things is it just like a completely redone custom board with some sort of chip apparently on board to account for that super fx and are there other deals maybe in place with different companies because this doom announcement did sort of come out of nowhere for uh, for a super nintendo cartridge and i almost wonder if companies like like capcom or square enix would ever consider maybe partnering with limited run games because apparently they have the avenues to create these things physically and maybe bring some of their titles back as cartridges for Super Nintendo, could this whole thing be cyclical and we come all the way back around from cartridges to discs back to cartridges for the physical market? Because as we know, discs and everything, those are slowly going away seemingly in favor of digital distribution. And while many of the cartridge-based games are available digitally, there may actually be a market, collectors or otherwise, that would actually pay decent money to have these things you know what i'm really curious about not that i think it would ever happen but if nintendo one day showed up and just put out a tweet that said hey we are going to be reselling some of our older games 
as cartridges, whether it's for the Super Nintendo, the Nintendo, the Nintendo 64, what kind of reception or reaction that would get online? Would they sell? I mean, okay, so I, I feel like they would sell. We, we see Nintendo right now having people line up in front of gotcha machines uh, that y- you you get these these uh, these buttons and analog sticks that are little keychains from the N64 and stuff, and that apparently is selling really well. So I don't doubt that just Nintendo's brand right now would be strong enough to sell them. My question would be, would it sell enough for it to make sense for Nintendo or even other, some of these other companies to do it? Because while retro gaming in general is a hotly discussed topic, I do still wonder if that market is large enough yet to hold up some of these larger projects from these big companies and corporations. Clearly, we saw Nintendo do something with the NES Classic, SNES Classic, but they didn't have to rely on you having a Super Nintendo, for example, already, right, to be able to play the game itself that they would sell you for probably 60 or 70 bucks. Cartridges, still not cheap, right? So it's something I think about, not that I believe will ever necessarily see the results of it, but I guess you never know. What an interesting turn of events here, and let me know what you guys think about this one down below, because while I'm talking about Super Nintendo specifically, you can make the case for all kinds of different cartridge-based systems. It could be Nintendo, it could be Genesis, you could make the case for the the Master System or the Jaguar. I mean, really, the list goes on and on and on. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.